So let's have a look at resonance in a string. Three things we're going to look at. How to produce a standing wave. What are the features of the natural frequency of a string? And what do we mean by harmonics? We're going to use a string as our example. The string is fixed to a fixed point. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a pulse in a string by flicking our hand up and down. Um, it could be a string or it could be something like a slinky if you need something to imagine. So the first thing we do is we create a pulse, an upward pulse. The pulse travels, hits the um, fixed point and returns back to the hand. So the first pulse is sent away. It then reflects back and then reflects again to the fixed point and reflects back to the hand and so on and so on. If we just make one pulse, the pulse will move away, back, away, back, away, back, away, back, away, back. And it'll finally just fade away. Now, since energy is absorbed by the surrounding, the pulse quickly fades away. Now, if a second pulse is inserted exactly at the point of which that pulse returns, the second pulse adds to what remains of the original pulse. So if I create one pulse, bounces off, comes back to my hand, and right when it comes back to my hand, I create a second pulse. That second pulse adds to whatever remains of the first pulse. And if I keep doing that, then the amplitude of that wave grows. And the another neat feature of it is that that wave will appear not to be moving. It just grows large like that and you see that the string seems to uh, kind of take on this uh, smile um, like, a, like a mouth uh, shape. So when this occurs we say that the wave is standing and it's standing because it appears not to be moving anymore. Now if the oscillator, that would be the hand in this case, continues in phase with the string, the amplitude of the string will increase to the extent greater than the disturbance, the amount that the hand moves. So if I take a, a string and move it up and down, and let's say I move it five centimeters, five centimeters up, and five centimeters below the equilibrium point. If I match things just right, I can end up having an amplitude which is greater than the five centimeters. That's achieved if I move my hand in phase. Now we do the same thing when we push a child on a, on a swing. Um, when I push a child on a swing, I extend my hands, I don't know, about a foot. Yet that child ends up having an amplitude which is much greater than a foot. And the reason is the child, that first time I push them away, they move away, they come back, they lose a little bit of energy, but not all of it. And I put some more energy into the system and I keep doing that. And I'm moving my hand only about a foot, yet the amplitude of the swing ends up growing larger and larger. So what can happen if I um, time my disturbances just right, I will end up matching the natural frequency of the string. So my disturbance has to match whatever the characteristics of that material is. Now if I move even faster, twice as fast as the first, what will happen instead of having this shape, I'll end up having kind of like that double shape. Let's go back to the first one and, and talk about these labels here. The top of that curve is considered to be the antinode, and the part on the wave that does not seem to move at all, like the fixed point right there, it's not obviously it's not moving because it's fixed, we call that the node. This part over here we also consider the node, yet there is a little bit of motion there, but it's not as much as the antinode, which is the largest part of the wave. You could think of that being the top of the crest. Now if I move the string with twice the speed, what will end up happening is I'll end up getting two antinodes form. A node in the middle and a node on either end. 
And if I move it three times as fast, the disturbance, what will happen is I'll end up creating three of these bumps, three of these crests, and it'll have a whole series of antinodes and nodes in between. This is the fundamental frequency or the natural frequency of that string. That occurs when I have this disturbance perfectly matched with the, the, the natural tendency of that string to vibrate. We call that the fundamental frequency or the natural frequency of that string. We also call that the first harmonic. And the shape of the wave would be node, antinode, node. If I move this twice as fast, um, we end up having two antinodes. And basically, this is going to be twice what we see here, although it's in the same space. So the length, the distance from here to here, or the length of the string doesn't change. It's just what we see inside the pattern in that's formed on the string, the wave pattern. So we call this the second harmonic, and that is node, antinode, node, antinode, node, as we see in the diagram. We also call the second harmonic the first overtone. It's the overtone beyond the natural frequency or the fundamental frequency. That's just terminology. Now, if I move it three times as fast, I get the three bumps. We call that the third harmonic. That's uh, na 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 and we call that the second overtone. So the harmonic, you'll notice that these harmonics are multiples of the fundamental. This is two times the fundamental and this is three times the fundamental and that's achieved by multiplying the disturbance um, a whole number of the original disturbance. So harmonic whole number multiple of the fundamental frequency. So let's look at a specific example of, say, plucking a string. So instead of moving my hand up and down, what we're going to do is we have a string which is supported at either end, kind of like a, a string on a violin or a guitar, and we grab the string in the middle and we pull it up and release it. And what will happen is, since we're stretching it, that string will move up and down, exhibiting simple harmonic motion, and will produce a sound because sound is an example of simple harmonic motion. Now, what will happen is we can exhibit, um, in this case, I have uh, three different harmonics. This would be the fundamental frequency. So when I pluck it, we will hear a particular frequency, a particular sound. And uh, we can calculate what that sound is. Um, I want to look at the, or have you notice the relationship between the length of the string and what part of the wave is that fits into that when we're talking about the fundamental frequency. And you'll notice that we only have half a wave here. Here's a diagram of a sine wave, and we know that a sine wave goes from peak to peak. Or in other words, there would be two peaks, um, sorry, a peak and a trough. Um, in our typical sine wave. Here we only have one peak there. So L is equal to half lambda, or the fundamental wavelength is equal to two times the length of the string. And we call that the first harmonic. The second harmonic, if we pluck the string, we actually produce more than one harmonic at the same time. And in this case, L is going to be equal to 2 over 2, 2 times the, uh, the uh, 2 over 2 uh, lambda. So the, um, the second wavelength, uh, or the wavelength of the second harmonic, is just equal to the length of the string. And the third harmonic is um, the wavelength is equal to 2 thirds of the L. Right here, that would be one wave, which means it's two-thirds of the entire length of the string. Now, in general, what we can say is that the length of the string is equal to n divided by 2 times lambda, so depending on what harmonic we're talking about, um, or uh, the wavelength n is equal to 2 times l divided by n. 
Now since we know that the speed of a wave is equal to the product of wavelength and frequency, or frequency is velocity divided by wavelength, we can combine these two equations and end up with an overall equation that summarizes the frequency of a plucked string. So the frequency of any harmonic is equal to the harmonic number times the velocity divided by 2L. The velocity would be the velocity of the wave in the string. And that would apply for any harmonic.